Good evening, this is John Felt with Blue Water Outlook. This is a hydrometeorological briefing for Isaac as of 6.30 p.m. Monday, August 27th. Here's the latest satellite picture, and uh, quite interesting. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, one of the things I want to point out is this dry slot. We're having some dry air uh, work its way into Isaac, and, and that might slow the intensity development just a tad. But on the other hand, look at these bumpy clouds here to the north, uh, to the west. Uh, those are strong uh, thunderstorms, and we also see, it looks to me like uh, increasing circulation, maybe trying to fi uh, form an eye there. Um, but I think the overall continuation of a slow uh, progression in intensity looks pretty good as we get through the evening hours and into tonight. Now here's the uh, Hurricane Center's forecast. Um, the European model and the American model, which have been disagreeing over the last couple days, are now coming together. So I think we have a high degree of certainty as far as the landfall near New Orleans. Um, but look at this here. Look how close these are spaced together, these forecast tracks. Um, that means that the system is slowing. It's moving down only at northwest at 12 miles an hour. And when it does that, when I think of a slowing system um, such as Isaac, I think immediately of extreme rainfall. I think we're going to see extreme rainfall uh, amounts before this is over, over parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and northwest Florida, if not further north um, as well. But we're going to see tremendous amounts of rain with this system over the next several days. Um, further north, it's a little bit hard to say what it's going to do as far as that um, uh, movement. Uh, it is forecast to move quicker as we go from Thursday through Saturday. We'll have to see. That's something that's going to be very important over the next couple days. If it doesn't, the flood threat will increase further north. Hopefully, it'll, it'll pick up speed with the upper trough and lift out, which will reduce the uh, flood threat uh, further north. Um, precipital water... Um, this is uh, the amount of moisture that's in the atmosphere column. So all the moisture that's being held right now, and that's 2.7 inches. Uh, tropical systems, as you might imagine, can hold a lot of moisture. That's why they produce a lot of rain. But when you look at the climatology of what that means for this type of time of year, you know, we're looking at 99th percentile, maybe 90th percentile. Um, and again, it's showing the potential of all this moisture in the atmosphere column. And if it's moving so slow, tremendous amounts of rain. Uh, more and more I'm seeing um, how the potential of this system pro to produce record-setting rain um, is out there. So uh, another graphic here, this shows moisture transport. Rain, uh, the moisture only has one place to go, and that's drifting north at west with the system. And the transport's right into that northwest Florida panhandle, southern Alabama, southern Mississippi, um, southern um, and southeast Louisiana uh, as it continues to move to the northwest. Keep in mind, I've said this before, the heaviest rain will be along and generally to the east of the track of the system. That's why this is the rainfall forecast, and what you see here is if you take the track of the system, the heaviest band of rain, that area of yellow and orange, is to the east, just to the immediate east of the track of the system. Uh, we also have a secondary band that moves out into Georgia with these outer bands that are streaming through. Uh, I'm not sure the confidence is, is quite as high on that as the other one, but the most extreme rain is going to be there in that green and yellow area, and we're going to have widespread pooling of water. We're going to have urban flooding problems in any of the metro areas, obviously New Orleans, um, further all the way through all of uh, Mississippi, as well as parts of Alabama. Another way we can look at this, this is the probability over a 24-hour period of four inches or more, and we're looking at probabilities of 50 percent or more, and even in Georgia, 30 percent. Now this is Thursday morning, so what I want to point out here is that uh, this recording is uh, late on Monday. Um, and this is Thursday, we're still seeing probabilities of four inches of rain over a 24-hour period, uh, still in the same area that we're probably going to see it late tomorrow. So it's not going to move quickly at all once it moves onshore, and we're going to have a lot of rain. I don't know how many times I can say that. Um, the flood potential outlook, this is the significant uh, river flooding, the moderate or major or record flooding. And right now it's hugging the coast just because the system's not moving all that quick. Um, the rainfall rates decrease a bit as we get into the central part of Alabama and uh, Mississippi, and also that it begins to lift out. I think this will be adjusted, and, and it's not unusual to do that. Um, right now, all the river forecasts are based on forecast rainfall. Over the next couple days, as we get observed rainfall, this will be fine-tuned. It very well could be pushed a little bit further north. So the bottom line this evening, 
Very slow organization will continue. A slowing speed. Slowing speed means extreme rainfall. There will be days of heavy rainfall near landfall and over uh, areas within 50, 60 miles or even greater uh, from where it makes landfall. Uh, there will be some outer bands further to the east impacting Georgia. And um, the big question right now is how fast this will move out. If it doesn't move out quick or if it continues very slow up to the north, the rainfall, the extreme light rainfall will affect larger parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and um, even further north than that. This has been the uh, briefing from Blue Water Outlook. If you have any questions at all, feel free to send them to me, info, I-N-F-O, at bluewateroutlook.com. I will be updating this again first thing tomorrow morning. Thank you.